Prince Charming Misplaces His Bride by Christopher Healy Illustrated by Davida Ortu In the fictional nation of Harmonia, there lives a charming prince named Frederick, who has craved a life of adventure ever since he was a boy and met a visiting knight. Frederick's father, King Wilberforce, shields his son from any activity that might cause his son harm. Prince Frederick is not allowed to wrestle, do martial arts, or explore caves. One day, the king comes up with a plan to make Frederick forget his thirst for all things exciting. He arranges for Frederick to train a tiger. The tiger is toothless and already trained, but Frederick doesn't know that. Nevertheless, the prince's attempt at taming the wild beast goes very, very wrong. The king thinks his plan has worked, and it does, for a while. More than a decade passed before the thought of adventure found its way back into Frederick's mind. It happened on the night of the big palace ball, at which it was hoped that Frederick would find a bride. He never left the palace, so this type of event was the only way for him to meet girls. Among the dozens of elegant women at the ball that night, there was one girl who caught Frederick's attention immediately. And it wasn't just because she was beautiful and elegantly dressed. No, she had something else. A daredevil gleam in her eyes. He'd seen that look only once before, in that old night all those years ago. Frederick and the mystery girl had the time of their lives dancing together. But at midnight, she ran off without a word. Father, I have to find that girl, insisted Frederick, newly inspired and feeling a bit more like his seven-year-old self again. Son, you've never been outside the palace gates, the king replied in a foreboding tone. What if there are tigers out there? Frederick shrank away. That tiger episode had really done a number on him. Elegant Someone or something that is elegant is stylish and pleasant to look at. Foreboding If something is described as foreboding, it suggests that something bad is going to happen. Episode An episode is an event or period of time that is important in some way. But Frederick didn't give up entirely. He instructed his trusted valet, Reginald, to find the mystery woman for him. It turned out that Ella, that was her name, wasn't a noble woman at all, just a sooty cleaning girl. But her story, the way she mixed it up with a fairy and used magical means to escape her wicked stepfamily, intrigued Frederick even if he hoped he'd never have to meet any of her relatives. When he told his father he wanted to marry Ella, the king sputtered in surprise. I thought I'd fixed you, but apparently I didn't, the king scowled. You don't get it at all, do you? An ill-bred wife would destroy your image more than any scar or broken limb ever would. Up until that point, Frederick had always believed that the king enforced strict rules because he feared for his son's safety. But now, he saw that wasn't necessarily the case. So, for the first time, Frederick stood up to his father. You do not rule me, he stated firmly. Well, technically you do, being as you're the king, but you do not rule my heart. My heart wants Ella. And if you don't bring her here to be with me, I will go to her. I don't care how dangerous it is out there. I would ride a tiger to get to her if I had to. In truth, Frederick was utterly intimidated by the thought of venturing out into the real world. If his father refused to meet his demands, he had no idea if he would be able to follow through on his threat. Luckily for him, the king was shocked enough to give in. And so, Ella came to live at the palace. She and Frederick were officially engaged to marry, 
and the tale of the magical way in which the couple met became the talk of the kingdom. Within days, the minstrels had a new hit on their hands, and the tale was told and retold across many realms. But while the popular version of the story ended with a happily ever after for Prince Charming and Cinderella, things didn't go as smoothly for the real Frederick and Ella. Scowled. If you scowled, you frowned or had an angry look on your face. Intimidated. Someone who is intimidated feels afraid of someone or something. Ironically, it was Ella's bold and venturesome spirit, the very thing that Frederick found so attractive about her, that came between them. Ella's dreadful stepmother had treated her like a prisoner in her own home and forced her to spend nearly every waking hour performing onerous tasks, like scrubbing grout or chipping congealed mayonnaise from between fork tines. While Ella suffered through all this, she dreamed of a more exhilarating life. She fantasized about riding camels across deserts to search ancient temples for magic lamps, or scaling cloud-covered peaks to play games of chance with the rulers of hidden mountain kingdoms. She honestly believed that anything could happen in her future. When Ella met Frederick at the ball, it was the climax of a day filled with magic and intrigue, and she assumed it was the beginning of a non-stop thrill-a-minute existence for her. But life with Frederick was not quite what she'd expected. Frederick tended to sleep in, sometimes until lunch, and he'd often spend over an hour grooming himself to his father's specifications. By the time Ella finally saw him each day, she would be more than ready for some sort of excitement. But Frederick usually suggested a more subdued activity, like picnicking, listening to music, or quietly admiring some art. Don't get me wrong. Ella enjoyed all those things for the first few days. But by the 14th picnic, she began to fear that those same few activities were all she was ever going to do at the palace. Her unchanging routine made her feel uncomfortably like a prisoner again. So one morning, she decided she would speak frankly with Frederick about what she needed. That morning, as usual, Frederick slept late. When he eventually got up, he spent 15 minutes, pretty quick for him, browsing a closet filled with ultra-fancy suits before finally deciding on a crisp white outfit trimmed with gold braiding and tasseled shoulder pads. The five minutes after that were dedicated to straightening his short, light brown hair. Unfortunately, a few stubborn strands refused to stay in place, and so the prince did what he did whenever he got frustrated. Reginald! Within seconds, a tall, slender man with a thin, pointy mustache popped into the prince's bedroom. Yes, my lord, he asked in a voice stiff enough to match his rigid posture. Subdued. Something that is subdued is quiet and low-key. Rigid. Something that is rigid is stiff and does not bend easily. Good morning, Reginald, Frederick said. Can you fix my hair? Certainly, my lord, Reginald said, as he grabbed a silver brush and began using it to tidy the prince's bedhead. Thank you, Reginald, Frederick said. I'm off to see Ella, and I want to look my best. Of course, my lord. I think I'm going to have Cook surprise her with breakfast in bed. Reginald paused. I'm reasonably sure, my lord, that the young lady has already eaten breakfast. Drat, muttered the prince. So it's happened again. How long ago did she wake up? About three hours ago, Reginald replied. Three hours? But I asked you to wake me when Ella got up. I'm sorry, my lord, Reginald said sympathetically. You know I'd love to help you, but we're under strict orders from the king. Your beauty sleep is not to be disturbed. Frederick burst from his seat 
waving away Reginald's brush. My father ordered you not to wake me. He's still trying to keep me and Ella apart. He rushed to the door of his bedroom, then quickly back to the mirror for one last check of the hair, and then out and down the hall to look for his fiance. Ella wasn't in her room, so Frederick headed to the gardens. He paused briefly to sniff a rose bush when he heard the sound of approaching hoofbeats. He looked over his shoulder to see that a large white horse was bearing down on him, tearing through the garden at a fast gallop, leaping over one hedgerow after another. The prince tried to run, but the golden tassels of his jacket caught on the shrub's thorns. Frederick tugged frantically at his stuck sleeve as the horse's rider pulled up on the reins and brought the steed to a halt. From the saddle, Ella looked down at him and laughed. She wore a distinctly unfancy blue dress, and her tied-back hair was disheveled from the ride. Her strong, athletic build and warm, healthy glow were a stark contrast to Frederick's slender frame and sun-deprived complexion. I hope you haven't been stuck there all morning, she said, only half-joking. Disheveled. If someone looks disheveled, he or she is not neat or tidy. No, this just happened, Frederick said, relieved. I don't suppose you could possibly hop down and lend me a hand. Ella slid off the saddle, patted her horse's nose, and crouched down to help free the prince's jacket from the thorns. I told you those tassels would get you into trouble some day, she said. But they're what all the most fashionable noblemen are wearing these days, Frederick said brightly. He brushed himself off and struck a chest-out, hands-on-hips pose to show off his outfit. He hemmed it up to get a laugh out of Ella. It worked. <laughs> Very nice, Ella said with a chuckle. I'd love to see you up on a horse sometime, she hinted, petting her mare's pink nose. Yes. I'm sure I'd look positively heroic up there, Frederick said. It's a shame I'm allergic to horsehair. He wasn't allergic. He was afraid of falling off. A terrible shame, Ella sighed. I didn't realize you knew how to ride, Frederick said. Considering the way your stepmother kept you under lock and key, I wouldn't have thought you had much time for equestrian lessons. I didn't, Ella said. Charles, your head groom, has been teaching me these past few weeks. I usually practice in the mornings while you, um, while you sleep. Frederick changed the subject. So, have you heard the song that Penny Feather wrote about you? That bard of ours certainly has a way with a quill. The song is very popular, I hear. Supposedly, the minstrels are singing it as far as Silveria and Sturmhagen. Before you know it, You'll be more famous than me, or even more famous than Pennyfeather. Though I don't really like the fact that he called you Cinderella. Makes you sound dirty and unkempt. I don't mind, said Ella. I was dirty and unkempt for years. I was always covered in soot and cinders from cleaning the fireplace, so at least I see where he got the name from. Speaking of names, said Frederick, have you noticed that the song refers to me as Prince Charming? My real name's not in there at all. People are going to think I'm the same prince from that Sleeping Beauty song or the Rapunzel one. Here, listen and tell me what you think, he called out to a passing servant. Excuse me, my good man. Could you please fetch Penny Feather the Mellifluous for us? Tell him that the prince and Lady Ella would like a command performance of the tale of Cinderella. I'm sorry, my lord. The servant replied, Mr. Pennyfeather is unavailable. He hasn't been seen for days, actually. It's the talk of the palace. We assumed you would have heard by now. No one knows where the royal bard is. Well, that explains why I haven't been getting my lullaby these past few nights, Frederick said thoughtfully. Frederick! Maybe something awful has happened to Pennyfeather, Ella said, sounding a bit too excited by the prospect. We should check into it. 
Come on, let's go. We need to figure out the last person to see him. Let's start by asking at the gate. Oh, I'm sure it's nothing so dramatic, Frederick said quickly. The only thing he had a harder time imagining than a crime occurring within the royal palace was himself investigating such a crime. He's probably just off at a bard convention somewhere, one of those gatherings where they vote on the precise number of feathers a minstrel should have in his cap, that sort of thing. But don't worry. Just because Penny Feather himself isn't here doesn't mean we can't have music. I'll just send for... Never mind the song, Frederick, Ella said, taking a deep breath. <sighs> Remember how we were just talking about my sheltered childhood? Frederick nodded. Now that I'm free, I want to have new experiences. I want to find out what I'm capable of. So if we're not going to look into Penny Feather's disappearance, what can we do today? she asked. What kind of adventure can we have? Adventure. Right. Frederick pondered his options briefly. It is a lovely day. Nice and sunny. <gasps> I'm thinking picnic. Ella slumped. Frederick, I need to do something different. Frederick stared at her like a lost baby rabbit. I hear there's a troop of traveling acrobats in town, Ella suggested. Maybe we could get them in here to teach us some tumbling. Oh, but I've got that problem with my ankle. He had no problem with his ankle. How about a treasure hunt? Ella proposed excitedly. Some of the kitchen staff were gossiping about a bag of stolen gold that one of your father's old valets hid in the tunnels below the castle. We could try to find it. Oh, but I can't go below ground level. You know what dampness does to my sinuses. Dampness did nothing to his sinuses. Can we go boating on the lake? I can't swim. This was true. Ella huffed. Frederick? What can we do? I'm sorry if this sounds rude, but I'm bored. We could have a different kind of picnic, Frederick offered hopefully. We could do breakfast food for lunch. Croissants, poached eggs. How's that for shaking things up? Ella walked back to her horse and hopped up into the saddle. Go ahead and order your picnic, Frederick, she said flatly. I'm going to ride a bit more while you wait. Okay, Frederick said, and waved to her. I'll stay right here. I'm sure you will. You're very good at that, Ella replied, and she rode off. An hour or so later, Frederick sat out on the palace lawn. Well, on a carefully unfolded blanket, actually. He didn't want to get grass stains on his white pants. Waiting for his lunch and his fiance to arrive. A servant arrived and set down a tray of breakfast delicacies in front of Frederick. My lord, the man said, as he bowed and backed away, there's a message there for you. Frederick saw a folded piece of paper nestled between a bowl of grapefruit slices and a plate of chocolate chip waffles. He picked up the note with a sudden sinking feeling about what it might say. Sweet, good-hearted Frederick, I'm terribly sorry to do this to you, and I hope that someday you will understand why I had to leave. You seem very comfortable in your life here at the palace. I can't make you into someone who wants to climb mountains, paddle rushing rivers, and explore ancient ruins. You don't want to do those things, and that's fine. It's just not your cup of tea. Your cup of tea is, well, a cup of tea but I need something more. When you mentioned that song about Rapunzel, it got me thinking. The prince in that story tried to rescue Rapunzel, but Rapunzel ended up rescuing him. Now that girl is an inspiration, so I'm heading off to find her. I think Rapunzel and I will hit it off. I think she'll make a great partner for hunting down Pennyfeather. And even if we end up finding him at a boring old convention like you say, who knows what kind of adventures will be in store for us along the way. Frederick, you are a lovely man, and I have nothing but good wishes for you. For what it's worth, 
That night at the ball really was the most romantic night of my life. All the best, Ella. Frederick dropped the letter onto his empty plate. So, he thought, the ball was the most romantic night of her life, huh? Well, that's not saying much coming from a girl whose typical nights consisted of scraping dead spiders out of cracks in the floorboards. And look how she signed it. All the best? That's how you sign a thank you note to your dog walker. Frederick had completely lost his appetite. Reginald! Am I really that boring? Frederick was back in his room, sitting slumped on the edge of his cashmere covered bed, while Reginald, rigid as ever, stood next to him, awkwardly patting the prince's head. There, there, my lord, the valet answered. I don't think the Countess of Bellsworth would call you boring. Do you remember how elated she was when you taught her how to cha cha? You have many, many admirers, sir. Yes. Frederick said sorrowfully, but Ella is apparently not among them. It seems that Lady Ella simply seeks a different kind of life than that which you can provide for her here at the palace, Reginald said. Poached eggs! How stupid can I be? Frederick smacked himself on the forehead. There will be other women, my lord. I don't want any other women. I want Ella. Reginald, what do you think I should do? And be honest with me. Don't just tell me what you think my father would want you to say. Reginald considered this request. He'd been caring for Frederick since the prince was a child, and he'd never been more proud of Frederick than when he saw the young man stand up to his overbearing father. Frederick could use someone as feisty and fearless as Ella in his life. Don't let her get away, Reginald said dropping his overly stiff posture and speaking in an unusually casual tone. Wow, Frederick gasped. Did you just get two inches shorter? Never mind me, Reginald said. Did you hear what I told you? Get a move on. Go after Ella. But how, Frederick asked, still bewildered to hear his longtime valet speaking like a regular person. We'll put you on a horse. Charles can show you the basics. You don't need to be the world's best rider. You just need to be able to get around. Stick to the roads and you'll be fine. But I know you're scared, Frederick. But here's my advice. Get over it. Ella wants someone as adventurous as she is. A real hero. Then I've got no hope, Frederick sulked. I'm a fantastic dresser. My penmanship is top-notch. I'm really good at being a prince, but I'm pretty lousy at being a hero. Reginald looked him in the eye. There's a bit of courage in you somewhere. Find it. Go catch up with Ella, wherever she is, and just see what happens. She might be impressed enough that you've left the palace. Feisty. Someone who is feisty is bold, energetic, and determined. Sulked. If you sulked, you were crabby because you were annoyed or disappointed about something. There's no way my father will allow me to do this. We won't tell him. He'll notice I'm gone eventually, and when he does, he'll send his men to retrieve me. Whichever way you go. I'll send them in the opposite direction. I'm still not sure I should. It's really dangerous out there. That's your father talking, Reginald said. Look, if you go on this journey, you're not just doing it for Ella. You're also doing it for that little boy who once wanted to try everything. You mean my cousin Lawrence, who broke his leg trying to fly with those wax wings? Reginald looked at him soberly. Frederick, you don't really remember your mother, but I do, and I know what she'd want you to do. Frederick stood up. Okay, I'll go. That's the spirit, said Reginald. 
Frederick marched out of his room. A second later, he marched back in. I should probably change into something more appropriate for the outdoors, he said. Reginald put his arm around him. You don't own anything more appropriate for the outdoors, he said with a smile. Come, let's get you down to the stables.